could you describe uh, what's an astronaut's typical day routine? Well, as a shuttle astronaut, my typical day would begin with, of course, waking up. After that, we have a, a bit of time to get washed up, shave if we want to, have some breakfast, and then get ready for the day. Well, depending on the day, there's a whole different plan. If you're going to go on a spacewalk, there's a particular plan. If you're going to be doing robotics or scientific experiments, or if you're going to do a rendezvous with the space station. So each day has its own template, and you'll end up with being quite busy during the day on a space shuttle flight. And then finally in the evening, and our evening being considered a after dinner and before bedtime, then you'll have perhaps some time to yourself in order to listen to some music, uh, type some emails, or just look at the earth. You've left NASA since 2008, right? What is it that you miss the most? Well, since certainly you... I miss flying in space a whole lot. That's one of the things I really, really enjoyed about my time at NASA. The other things I miss actually are the being with those people who are actually going into space. But I also recognize that it's impossible to get to do something forever. And now it's my turn, now that I'm a professor, a teacher, I work with high school students, college students, and graduate students in order to help prepare them. And I hope perhaps they'll go to work for NASA someday. Okay. And when you were in space, were the times you felt awe or fear? In space, it's a dangerous place. So anybody who goes to space should recognize what can happen to them. We've seen that with Challenger and, and, and Columbia accidents. So absolutely, I recognize that there's, that there's danger there. The idea is to use the fear that one does have, and obviously it's not too much, I, I went four times, but to use that to make your performance sharper, to keep you ready for whatever can happen. Do not become complacent. So certainly there was that, that aspect. I wouldn't want to go into space with somebody who said they had no fear. I want people to realize what can happen and I want them to want to come home when we're finished. You also mentioned a question about whether there was any awe. Yeah, you felt absolutely. very excited about it. Yeah, very exciting to go into space and absolutely awesome to get to look at the Earth from this vantage point. The beauty of the Earth is uh, indescribable. The closest I can come to it is, if you've ever seen an IMAX movie, the large screen with a, a, a picture of the Earth from space, then this is a good preparation, but it's better to see it yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, since you mentioned uh, seeing Earth from really far away, has the way you perceive the world and the universe uh, changed since you've traveled in space? I would say it has. It has made me more aware, I would say, of our relationship with the Earth and the different scale of things. On the one hand, the Earth is very small because it only takes an hour and a half to go around it. And if it only takes an hour and a half to go around, then, then it can't be very large. But looking out the window, for that hour and a half, you realize you go across oceans and continents, and the Earth is actually quite large. So there's this difference in scales, and it also makes me think in terms of time scales as well. There's short time scale, and then there's long time scale. So I think about there's this Earth, this planet, and it's been circling our sun for about five billion years. And our universe is about 13.7 billion years since the Big Bang. So it's made me think more about that and our place there and how we can affect the Earth and how even if we do affect the Earth, it's not sure that there'll be any evidence of us if we're not careful in a million or two million years. Okay, Dr. Newman, thank you very much. You're welcome.